king shit. Hey everybody, Green X here. Today, we'll be playing Chivalry 2, a game all about ignoring your responsibilities. Missing an arm? A minor inconvenience. Missing two arms? Now you're just making excuses. The objective? I didn't even know there was an objective. I had to find that out through the latest patch notes of the game. I just sit on my throne and slap away the common peasants occasionally. It's always satisfying watching the apes fight over their favorite underaged, romanceable persona characters. I mean, what the fuck do you want from me? You want me to capture the flag? You want me to escort the payload oh wait we already have that uh it's called escort the prisoner more like escort the retard every time someone spawns the prisoner they run in the complete opposite direction and walk into the enemy's castle who the fuck is this faggot? Chivalry 2 is the only game I know of where your teammates are just as big an enemy than the very team you are opposing. So, if you ever decapitate a comrade, don't feel bad. If a couple untimely deaths done in by your own hands is what it takes to reach enlightenment, then uh, so be it. Besides, they were in the way, and right now, you're popping off. Confucius once said, Get the fuck out the way. Bruh. Point is, don't let a few casualties get in the way of a dub. And if they kick you from the game, that means you're doing something right. Don't kill your teammates on Chivalry 2. Shut up, bitch. I'm getting this dub on BD. Some fake politicians would call this a tragic victory. I call it a win-win. People complaining in chat, get fucked. I'm at the top of the leaderboard. It's eat or be eaten, boys. And just like your average American, I weigh 762 pounds. All right, time for some story. The factions have pretty bland lore. That's why I'm gonna spice it up with my own Green X original backstory. There's two factions in the game, the Mason Order and Agatha. Agatha believes that you should be able to express your love for fictional characters freely without consequence. However, during a meet and greet with the two opposing factions, a commanding officer for the Mason Order got into a heated back and forth with the Sergeant of Agatha. They argued over which romanceable Persona 5 character was the best one to wife up. And, uh, as you might have expected with such a topic, the argument got more and more heated. To the point where the sergeant brought up his favorite character, Futaba, as an example. The commanding officer reacted with disgust and claimed that if you romance Futaba, you are a pedophile. He then followed it up by calling the sergeant a flaming cunt. In response, the sergeant- Oh, fuck. In response, the sergeant proceeded to decapitate every single person in the fucking room including his comrades. This immediately set off another war between Agatha and Masons because I had broken the peace treaty signed in the previous game. They've been battling ever since. So, basically, summed up, Agatha is a nihilistic 4chan group that watches way too much illegal pornography, while the Mason Order are just a bunch of red pillars. I know, very little difference between them, but hey, I didn't write the lore. Uh, these guys did. The combat for this game, off the jump, is really good. It took an already great combat system and adjusted it to accommodate both newcomers and longtime players. However, there is still a lot of controversy surrounding the combat. You see, back in the good old days of chivalry medieval warfare, the mechanics were relatively the same, if my memory serves me correctly, but it was a lot less refined and easy to break. For example, there was no block, only parry, which basically turned the game into a stamina war between the two fighters. Because of this, players had to find new ways to adapt to the shitty combat mechanics, and here was the solution. You might be thinking to yourself, what the fuck is this retard doing? I wish I didn't know. This supremely inane act of faggotry is what the people call camera dragging. Let me just say, if you do any type of camera dragging whatsoever, you are a certified booty popper, and you must kiss men. Unless you're already into that, which in that case, that's, that's fine. I don't discriminate over here. If anything, the average gay man is much more masculine than a camera dragger will ever be. Uh, more like camera fagger. This commenter pretty much summed it up. That's not to say camera dragging was a mistake, it was a very good idea and concept, but in Shiv 2, it's streamlined and harder to abuse. They've managed to appease both sides while still keeping the core mechanics relatively the same. I've seen people complain that camera faggers are still a thing, but you're absolutely kidding yourself if you think it's as bad as Shiv 1. The animations are much better and everything is easier to predict and counter. The hitboxes are also very straightforward. If it looks like your blade hit your target, then uh, theoretically, it probably did hit him, 
but sometimes it doesn't, but uh, we, we don't talk about that. Like the previous game, you have freedom in your attacks, and it feels so natural and so smooth. The only difference here is that you aren't dancing around with a flimsy blade decapitating people you aren't even fucking looking at. Camera dragging feels like a natural mechanic now, and not an exploit, which I'm happy to see. However, you know the old saying. When I'm gone, they'll just find another monster. Archers. Everyone hates archers. Even archers hate archers. I've seen people on opposite teams come together as a unit to decapitate one singular bowman. Why is there such a profound hatred? Multiple reasons. One, they feed off other people's kills. Two, they're archers. And three, they have no father. You could be in the most fire-ass 1v1 you've ever witnessed in your entire life, but it gets cut short by some dickhead with a crossbow. In a game where people are constantly moving, there is just something so infuriating to so many people about someone standing still for two-thirds of the game and getting the most kills on the leaderboard. I don't know about you, but personally, I made an oath to myself to ignore every living man on the battlefield and only attack the one archer in the back. So, go archers if you like anal, uh, receiving anal, specifically speaking. Uh, if you like giving anal, go the knight. First thing you'll notice is that this game is hard. I can't even say you'll get double teamed, because double is too small of a grouping. No, you're gonna get triple gain baned, donkey punched, blacked, if you will. And there's not much you can do to stop it other than mashing buttons and tossing your mouse around the desk like a retard and hoping to get kills. However, there are a couple loadouts you can go to maneuver these issues and help you become the best you possible in this stupid game. Here's some of my favorites. Ah, yes. I call this class the fuck around and find out, a reference to the common everyday activity of fucking around and the swift conclusion of finding out. I call this class the guts, because only manga we who are on their 38th volume of Berserk pick this class. It's less of an insult though, and more of just a way of life. And I call this class the word I can't say on YouTube or else I'll get banned. Basically, you want kills? Go the sledgehammer. You want more kills? Go the messer. You want more kills but without the added risk of dying? Go the archer. Pick these loadouts and you'll be getting kills and dodging deaths in no time. If this issue persists, however, don't worry, I have a quick solution. It's called refunding the game. Face it, you're gonna get curb stomped into the fucking ground and you're gonna like it. This ain't for honor, son. There are 64 players in this fucking server and you think you're gonna rise above them all? Like, yeah, yeah alright, yeah, you may you think you're the, the shit, shit, but are, are you the shit? shit? Absolutely not. There's no trick to this game. You just need to get good. And if you can't get good, then how about instead you get the fuck off of that server and uh, join mine instead. I need some easy kills so I can level up and get the quarter staff. Fun fact, did you know that there was actually an original game between Shiv 1 and Shiv 2 that wasn't Mordhau? It was called Mirage Arcane Warfare, and it was made by the same guys who made Shiv. It was pretty hype before release. It basically promised the same visceral combat you'd get in Shiv 1, but with magical elements thrown into the mix. Sounds pretty cool, right? Wrong. It sold like dog shit. Couldn't even pay my mortgage. People had issue with the game because it didn't have as intense combat, and it just wasn't that fun. But there was bad press on it even before release, so that could have contributed as well. Regardless, the game was forgotten. And by forgotten, I don't mean like the culling 2 where it became a meme with how bad it was, but forgotten as in you probably don't even know what the fuck I'm talking about right now. It didn't just flop, it dropped dead on the kitchen floor on release. It's a damn shame too, because the game looked pretty fucking awesome. Uh, it's too bad I'll never play it, and it's too bad you'll never play it either, because the servers got shut the fuck down. That's right, on top of the game being a massive fucking failure commercially, it also got shut down not even because of its sales, but because of the GDPR privacy laws that were getting passed in Europe. Something to do with data collection or something, I don't know, I don't care. If it isn't in America, I don't give a shit. Fuck it, even if it is in America, I still don't give a shit, that's why this country sucks right now. It's a wonder how the company didn't go bankrupt from how hard the game crashed, but they were able to move past it and come out with Chivalry 2, which was a pretty big success, all things considered. In terms of which game is better, between Chivalry 2 and Mordhau, they both have their own unique characteristics and different things going on for them that people will love. Both are pretty great games, but I haven't played Mordhau, so by trial of elimination, Chivalry 2 is the better game. There's a good amount of weapon variety in this game, but some are a little unbalanced. You got weapons like the Glaive, which is just brain dead easy gameplay, and also a good batch of weapons that are just straight up dog shit, not worth the progression to unlock at all. You also got the rapier, which, I mean, 
the rapier is just fucking insane. Chivalry also got a battle pass added into it recently, which is kinda gay, but whatever. It's not a deal breaker for me or anything. Other than that though, I can't find much to complain about. The map variety is great, and almost every single one I'm excited to play when it comes up. Big maps, small maps, some having unique objectives for those maps. Whether you're by yourself or with a friend, Chivalry 2 is just a fun ass time. Alright, let me look at my notes here. Let's see, uh, archers suck. Get triple teamed constantly, team killing is expected, throw goblets at retards, Jesus fucking Christ. The community is fucking retarded. Some of the worst shit posts I have ever seen. Oh God, who let bro cook on the subreddit? Good evening, gents. As you know, it is the moment of the week once again. What if I see you of your question? It's fucking crazy. Not much worse than most other multiplayer communities, but it's still something to keep in mind. I've seen people literally get doxxed before my very eyes in text chat simply because of the class they were going. So, if you're the type to talk shit in chat, like me, please, for the love of God, enable a VPN. This is not a sponsor or anything. Pick one, stick to it, and you'll be safe. Uh, probably. I don't know. Otherwise, worst case scenario, you're gonna get an obscenely overweight, unhygienic downy with a foam sword instant transmission to your doorstep with his fat rolls jiggling up and down. Clapping is a type of primal war call, like a Germanic tribe blowing the horn of battle. Except his horn is diabetes. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, I, I swear to God, guys, I, I did not write this script. It was not me. I'm, I'm just the commentator. Overall, Shiv 2 is a fucking fantastic game. Very rarely do I genuinely enjoy an online game, but this has had me coming back time and time again. Oh my fucking God, this train is driving me crazy. <laughs> When it was released in 2021, I at first hated it, not because of the core game design, but because the PS4 is a garbage ass console, and Torn Banner Studios thought it would be a great, reasonable little idea to have a mini fridge run its game. Seriously, stop releasing your games on this shitty piece of hardware. It won't work. This is the reason why Cyberpunk failed. I eventually gave up, and I never played the game again. Until I got a PC, then I bought it on PC, and now I fucking love it. It looks great, feels great, and runs just fine. It has content being pumped into it every few months, and seems to be on the right track of being a game with longevity. Though the nihilistic, realist part of me says that, yeah, this game will just die off like Mordhau and Shiv 1, but I hope that doesn't happen, because I love this game. I love all three Shiv games, even Mordhau, and I haven't even played that game. That's how you know it's good. I give this game a Jacques-Louis David painting out of 10. Anyway, that's all for today. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm gonna go and use the catapult.